Good evening all of you. Welcome to UNS EduTech's online classes. Today we are going to take a session on physics. And before going to that, let me introduce myself. Myself Sanal Mohanan. I am basically a mechanical engineer and I did my masters in applied mechanics from IIT Madras. And uh, now we are working for this UNS EduTech. We are developing, uh, actually we, uh, I will do one thing before going to the topic. I will give you a brief introduction about UNS EduTech. Most of you may be already knowing, but I will give you few like a uh, few words. I will tell you a little bit about UNS EduTech for those who joined first time. Okay. So UNS EduTech is actually a group of passionate people. Uh, most of the guys like your, our colleagues are from IIT Madras and some are from IAC Bangalore, Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. And uh, we actually while studying, while uh, we were doing our masters and uh, some, some of our colleagues are doing PhD, we actually experienced some problem. In the problem in the sense in, in our education system, there is, serious, there is a serious problem of students by hurting things. So that is a serious issue and uh, students are not reaching their full potential because of this habit. They are by hurting a lot of things and they are preparing only for exams. And eventually they are not thinking themselves, they are not doing anything for, uh, they are not doing any innovative thinking and original thinking is not happening. As a result, in uh, uh, at the end you know the productivity is going down or the productivity of the country itself going down. So we started a group, we started as in a humble way, we started a group and we started designing small small experimental setups, small small animations, small small explanation methodologies or we can say that pedagogy we are trying to, we are doing, our R&D wing is there, we have an office in Velachiri, we are doing a lot of research in how to teach properly, how to engage students in a better way so that the students can understand the concepts in a much better fashion rather than rote learning because you know rote learning will not stay in your mind the moment you the exam is over you are done okay nothing else is in your mind you see that entire thing will be gone so you have to understand the concept see what we are focusing on like under, uh, bringing the concept you are teaching the concepts thoroughly so that that will retain that co that concept will retain in your mind for a longer duration not longer duration till you die actually okay so that will retain in your mind so that you can apply you can think you can uh, you can uh, do that in real life rather than just as uh, like attending exams okay so we are doing right now we are focusing on concept based teaching as well as not only just experimental demonstrations, we'll be doing rigorous problem solving sessions are there so that you know that at the end we need we need marks in exams that then only we can score. In fact, that is the that is the situation. So but if you are understanding concepts, you can perform, you can do easily these kind of text, test, uh, I mean competitive exams, you can crack in a much easier way if you are understanding concepts and doing, attempting the exam. So we are dedicated for that. We are trying to give our best. Our group is doing a lot of research to uh, make this learning process much easier and much intuitive so that everybody will be able to understand even you know uh, some students are not able to understand something quickly but you know if you are doing the right way if you are teaching the students in the right way you will be able to pick up and everybody can understand what is the sign what is the concept behind certain things okay fine so today uh, i hope uh, all of you understood a little bit about our center and our operations our our uh, angle of uh, teaching so that you will understand in the upcoming sessions you will understand how we are planning to how we are uh, teaching and how uh, we are delivering the lectures okay and uh, today we are going to uh, cover a small portion an important portion in plus one physics and uh, uh, we have selected a topic fluid mechanics and fluid mechanics we are not starting from the beginning you know in the beginning there is a portion called fluid statics we can the fluid mechanics we can divide into two major branches one is fluid statics and another one is fluid dynamics or wherever fluid is stationary we call it fluid statics and when it is under motion for example water is flowing in pipe you know that is a fluid dynamics so that comes under the branch of physics called fluid dynamics so today we are going to cover two important topics in fluid mechanics fluid dynamics or so is a branch of fluid mechanics basically so I'll go to the next slide. So, just a second. See, these two concepts we are going to discuss today. So, here you can see continuity principle, continuity principle and Bernoulli's principle. All of you may be knowing about this. Okay. So, in fact, in in lower class itself, you already studied what exactly the continuity principle and what exactly is Bernoulli's principle, but in some other name, not in this name. So, we are when we apply 
conservation of mass all of you know that conservation of mass right i'm sure that all of you know conservation of mass conservation of mass is nothing but we cannot destroy mass see there are there are complications is not exactly correct in nuclear physics that is there is a different in if you are going to einstein's theory that is completely different there are other arguments we will we are not considering that see as of now we are considering a system of uh, system uh, like if if water is flowing in a pipe or if if you are considering a mass system we cannot destroy that mass that is we cannot destroy in the sense if if certain amount of ma mass is entering into a system that amount should come out we cannot if it is a continuous flow so here continuity means if you have a pipe system if water is flowing from one side to another or any liquid is flowing from one side to another the mass entered into the system should be leaving system means you know in thermodynamics we call it the 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 the, the components which you are under, under study that is called a system so the mass entering to the system should be leaving should leave the system it cannot accumulate in the system so that is called continuity principle we are going to the details we will soon go to the details then you will understand in a much better fashion definitely you will understand then the bernoulli's principle bernoulli's principle is nothing but again the conservation of energy there are two concepts you already know conservation of mass is there then conservation of energy is there these these two concepts you already studied in lower classes here when you apply that in fluid mechanics we call it continuity principle and bernoulli's principle okay so let us see what exactly is continuity principle then we'll do some problem then we'll we'll in fact we'll try to uh, show some experimental activity so that you can understand the concept in a much better fashion okay let us see before going to before going to the concept of continuity and bernoulli's principle you have to understand few concepts see you know the real the real fluid flow is really complicated and is still not understood you may not believe that the real fluid flow is still not understood completely so we are always studying some idealized situations see you can see that the 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 complete governing equation of fluid flow is still not solved okay it's actually a million dollar pro uh, problem you can search online if you are able to solve the the law of equation the equation is called navier stokes equation if you are able to solve that equation which is which is going to give you the complete governing Uh, mechanism behind fluid flow it is not solved yet and if you are slow, uh, if you are able to solve that you are going to get 1 million dollar is by clay institute you know clay mathematics institute is there you can see that if uh, if you are solving that if you are making a uh, acceptable solution you are going to get that much money okay so let it be there you can search that you can search in internet about that and you will understand more about that so now we are going to do uh an idealist analysis idealist idealistic means we are assuming we are taking certain assumptions then only we are applying the principle of continuity as well as bernoulli's theorem to fluid okay let us see which are the assumptions look here see you can see the assumptions major assumptions see ideal flow assumptions which are the ideal flow assumptions let us see that which are the assumptions see you can see first of all the flow is steady what do you mean by steady if you are considering a flow of liquid assume that you are considering flow of liquid in a channel or uh, uh, in a river flow is uh, like water is flowing so in such a situation if you are looking assume that this is a river okay assume that you are looking at a point a particular point you are focusing and if you are measuring the fluid flow velocity or any particular rate if you are measuring rate means with respect to time what is happening to a certain quantity so if you are doing that you know you can see that the values are not changing if you are measuring the velocity at that point the values are not changing at that particular point such a flow is called steady flow okay so the first assumption we are taking is the flow is steady okay the flow should be steady if you are going to apply the bernoulli's principle as well as continuity principle we are going to see what is bernoulli's principle let us do that slowly step by step now non viscous see the flow should be non viscous just a second see non viscous means see you know the viscosity is nothing but the friction in fluid like friction between fluid layers you know if you are comparing honey and water we say that honey is more viscous than water because you know that if you are pouring honey in the surface of table you can see that it moves slowly there is a huge pressure sorry huge uh, viscous uh, friction between the layers of fluid so that property is called viscosity and if you are applying continuity and bernoulli's principle we are assuming that is a very important point you see if you are not assuming these cases these two laws are not valid these two principles are not valid is really important okay so you have to understand see most of the time we apply certain conditions in the wrong situation 
if you don't know the concept thoroughly you will apply certain concepts in the wrong situation then you are going to lose marks okay so when you study something you have to read thoroughly the, uh, the, the assumptions taken before going to the theory okay because you know all the theories are not applicable in all situations so you have to understand that thoroughly so now we are saying that the non viscous if the visc the liquid is non viscous then only we can apply this condition so this is the second assumption we are using for idealist flow or ideal flow assumption we call it ideal flow assumption third one the flow should be incompressible is very important in fact you know incompressible means while flowing there is no shrinking in volume if you know that you take little air see one more thing fluid means it's not only liquid fluid means gaseous components as well as liquid components is called fluid okay many students have that misconception fluid means liquid no fluid means li liquid as well as gaseous substance okay now if air a stream of air is moving or if you're pumping if you're pumping air into uh, a tube if it is compressing in between that means it's getting shrinking then this case is not applicable because especially this compressibility is actually a separate wing called compressible flow if you are going to higher studies you will understand you know hypersonic flight supersonic flight everything comes under the compressible flow because during the flow what happened the air the volume under consideration may compress or expand it can happen so that kind of case we are assuming that in nowhere in the system the flow is getting compressed so we can, we are saying that this system is incompressible so that is the third assumption we are taking now one more thing is irrotational is not very relevant for your level because it's an advanced subject irrotation flow is a separate flow basically if you're considering a small element in the stream of motion of stream of fluid if that body is not rotating about the center of mass of that particular body then we call uh, call it irrotational flow see it have a lot of implications in higher studies you will realize that right now it is out of scope so no need to explain that so at least you understand that flow is irrotational if anybody is really curious you can go and explore that okay so these are the fundamental assumptions we are taking if you want to apply Bernoulli's principle or continuity principle okay so there are the advanced versions of Bernoulli's and continuity are there we can apply in different situations the modified versions are there but in your plus one level or for need and je we are going to cover only this under this ideal flow assumptions only we are applying to this situation only okay fine now let us see what exactly is uh, this uh, what exactly is this continuity principle okay let us see here i will try to explain this all of you listen put your complete attention here i will try to explain what exactly is continuity principle see here one important thing you have to understand here i am not discussing much about pressure you already i am assuming that you already know pressure pressure is nothing but you know that pressure is nothing but force by area okay force acting per unit area is called pressure let it be there now in this case this is actually a long pipe you have a long pipe okay and water is entering at this location water is entering at this location like this and water is leaving at the other side now assume that this is a section taken from a long pipe with a convergence convergence section converging because it's, this is coming kind of nozzle it's converging okay so this velocity let it be v1 okay this velocity at which the, the fluid is coming out is v2 okay now you have to understand certain concepts here here see we are trying to find out the volume flow rate see volume flow rate before going to volume flow rate you have to understand what is mass flow rate see any rate in physics by default when you say rate means with respect to time you are dividing the numerator denominator will be time see in this case if you are trying to find out the rate look here see if you are trying to find out the rate of any quantity so mass divided by the time delta t if you are taking or delta mass divided by delta t if you are taking that particular quantity is called rate of change of mass rate of change of mass means this dm by dt or this quantity having unit you know that kilogram per second the si unit of the system will be kilogram per second okay now you can see that this quantity will be constant that means if you are entering so we call one more thing i forgot to tell you this quantity we can call it as m dot in physics we use this m on the top we'll put a dot m dot means rate at which the mass flow happens or its si unit is kilogram per second okay 
yeah all of you put your complete attention here if anybody have any problem in uh, uh, receiving the audio or video put put your chat in the chat box you check that okay so look here here you can see the velocity of fluid entering is v1 now we are trying to find out how much will be the flow rate in terms of the area and velocity we are trying to find out look here in this case we can see that the mass we can say see density is defined density is nothing but rho greek letter rho is density density is equal to you know that mass by volume so i am going to use capital volume for uh, volume capital v for volume and i am going to use small v for let me use small v with a small curve like this okay small v for uh, velocity i am going to use so this mass you can find out see mass is nothing but you can see sorry see here mass is equal to we can see that see rho into volume and multiply okay rho v is equal to mass if i am going to delta t divide delta t both side okay i am going to divide both side with delta t you know this is going to give you the mass flow rate m dot you are getting m dot okay so m dot is nothing but delta uh, delta m by delta t or simply mass by time so here what is this quantity rho into this quantity we can write in another fashion rho into v dot we can write rho into v dot is nothing but the volume flow rate see v dot if you are dividing volume by i mean this bracket if you are closing only if you are taking only this fraction you are getting v dot v dot is nothing but meter cube per second okay like we are doing m dot is kilogram per second it is meter cube per second okay now let us see here you can see that i told you this m dot will be equal to rho into v dot now see you have seen that sorry i'll go i'll do one thing there is another page see here i can explain you in a little more clear in a clear way look here if you are taking a small delta x length here see you have to assume a 3d structure in this case see if you if it is a 3d structure you know this thickness is you are taking you are assuming as delta x so see area this is actually a1 a1 is a section is given so a1 if you are multiplying with delta x what you will get you know that for a cylinder base area into height is going to give you the volume okay so here a1 into x or delta x a1 into delta x so a1 into delta x is nothing but you are getting delta v okay same way one more thing you can do see what is the definition for velocity so velocity is equal to displacement by time that you can divide write like this delta x by delta t is nothing but velocity this delta x you can substitute like this delta x is nothing but from this particular equation we can write like v into delta t do one thing substitute that delta x here so we can see that a1 into delta x i am going to substitute as v1 into delta t this is going to give you delta v okay see here a into v1 is going to give you a v a into v1 into delta t is going to give you delta v now if you are trying to find out see in the next slide i will show you if you are trying to isolate a into v1 basically what you are going to get see a1 into velocity 1 is going to give you delta v divided by delta time so what is this this is nothing but again volume flow rate you are getting okay so a into v this quantity is important the product see we are trying to express the volume flow rate in terms of area and velocity so here area of process in the previous slide you can see that see here area into velocity if i am multiplying i am getting volume flow rate see you know that as per mass conservation if the flow is incompressible that means density at this location rho 1 the density at this location rho 2 both are same means rho 1 is equal to rho 2 means the flow is incompressible so in that case we can we can say that if this quantity is delta v if if you are estimating both side on the left hand side we can say a1 into v1 into delta t in a same in a similar fashion we can argue that the volume flow rate at the right side should be equal to or we can say delta v2 here let us call it as delta v1 
we can say that this is nothing but a2 into velocity at the second session into delta t. So, if you are dividing this again you can say volume flow rate delta v by delta t you are getting. So, you can say a1 v1 this quantity this particular quantity is going to give you the volume flow rate and that should be constant because the we already said that mass flow rate m dot in the one should be equal to m dot in the second case because the flow is uh, is, is uh, the conservation of mass is following the conservation of mass is following and if the density is constant we can argue that whatever delta v1 should be equal to delta v2 basically we are arguing that we are saying that a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 this is a very very important concept you can use this solve uses to solve many problems you can use in combination with Bernoulli theorem then you will understand the importance of this equation okay so finally we are saying that a1 into v1 is equal to a2 into v2 remember this is velocity is small v okay velocity now this quantity the mass the volume flow rate at inlet will be equal to volume flow rate at outlet see basically we are considering two different sections so in two when you are considering two different sections in a flow you, you can say that if it is an ideal flow that means incompressible viscosity is not there irrotational then it's a steady flow then area the volume flow rate will not change with respect to location so this quantity will be constant see what is the physical implications he, we already covered the theory now you know very well the theory so what is the physical implication see if you are you know that garden hose you might have seen the garden hose see garden hose when you uh, put water when you when you are trying to uh, water plants if you are closing the tip with your finger you know that water will increase speed you know that you might have seen a jet will form and you can uh, throw water to more distant locations see what is happening when you are closing so what is the implication here that you have to understand clearly when you are closing you are reducing the area when you reduce the area what is happening the velocity is increasing because we have to maintain this quantity constant see the main thing is we can show that this says that the product of area into velocity at any section should be a constant okay so now you think the garden hose situation now we will connect with real life okay whatever we discussed we are going to connect with real life situation so or you can do in toilet okay you you close the lid of you open the top fully close the lid little bit you can see that water is going to come out with much faster velocity what is happening here look when you are closing you are reducing the area so that the velocity should go up so that this right hand side will be constant again so this principle is called continuity principle i'm sure that you already know the pra practical implications of this law okay so it's very very important and it's very simple and elegant law a1 v1 is constant a v again a into v will give you the product of or the volume flow rate you will get the product of area and volume velocity will give you the volume flow rate now there is another beauty you know you already know if you are multiplying this quantity with the density what you will get you can see that see m dot you will get see m dot is equal to rho into a into v this quantity is nothing but mass flow rate this mass kilogram per second will be the unit si unit will be kilogram per second okay i hope all of you understood this thoroughly we'll do one thing we'll do a problem based on this okay and uh, you can do uh, one thing see uh, i'll be explaining the problem okay so what you have to do is who are putting the first comment okay we'll be giving a prize for that okay it's kind of uh, competition and uh, you can try to solve based on what we discussed see once again i'm briefing whatever mass entered into the system should leave the system okay then a into v is the volume flow rate and rho into av because this is nothing but rho is equal to mass by volume so okay so if you are multiplying rho with the volume flow rate you are basically getting mass flow rate okay now that problem these are the concepts required you have to understand uh, what is volume flow rate and what is conservation of mass and basically continuity principle you can apply you can try to solve the problem and drop your comments in that section in the comment section who are answering the correct who are is posting the correct answer will be giving we will be sending a 
surprise secret that will be a secret that will be a surprise okay not secret surprise okay let us see i am going to the problem see look here here you can see that there is a tube there is here you can see that 8 meter per second water is entering to the system at 8 meter per second and through one branch there are two branches it is bifurcating into two different branches okay so one branch the velocity is given is 6 meter per second okay now the area is given this area of cross section is given as a and this area of cross section is 0.8 times a and this is 3 times a so this is very larger 3 times of inlet so if that is the case so water is entering here leaving to this direction so can you solve this question this is actually a previous question we forgot to add the year previous year but it's a previous year question you can try to solve and drop your answer in comment okay and who are doing that first will be giving uh, a surprise gift okay yeah please do that okay please attempt
Okay, so we are happy to see your warm response and uh, the first answer was given by Sudha Chinna Thambi, congrats for that. Okay, we are really happy for your response, quick response. Then uh, Shandini did second, then third Niveda also posted the answer, then uh, Shivani also posted the answer. Okay, so we will be giving you all of you, drop your, these three people, four people, drop your email ID, so we will be coming back to you. Okay, fine. So we will be going back, uh, going to the sessions. See, uh, here we wish to explain some uh, something about our uh, class management system. So, in our system, we will be using LMS. LMS is basically learning management system. Some of you may be knowing this. Uh, so, this system is like nothing. It's a complete software. It's uh, something related to uh, uh, Moodle. So, we will be, uh, we'll be uh, conducting all our classes uh, through this uh, learning management system. And so that, uh, so that, uh, entire classes will be recorded. See, in the system, you will be getting a login and uh, you can, uh, you can uh, see even if you are missing some classes, all the videos will be recorded inside so that you can come back at any time. Basically, uh, effectively, uh, you are not losing any classes even if you are uh, missing some sessions. Okay. So, this learning management system uh, will post in that post system will be posting a lot of a uh, lot of DPPs, okay. DPP means daily practice questions, problems will be pro uh, updating and you can take up your test and entire documentation will be happening automatically, okay. So, we have UNS e-learning app. So, in that you can, you will be getting a login if you are, uh, if you are uh, enrolling with our course, okay. Fine. Let us go to the section. Next, we are going to discuss Bernoulli's principle. See, Bernoulli's principle like we discussed uh, the mass conservation, the conser mass conservation is continuity principle. So, here we are going to discuss Bernoulli principle. I told you Bernoulli principle is nothing but the conservation of energy. Okay. The conservation of energy means you know that what is conservation of energy? Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. All of you know that I am sure that all of you are thorough with that statement uh, at least by this time, at least by when you are in plus one now. Okay. So, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but you can transform from one form of energy to another form. Okay. That is called energy conservation. Here, in fluid flow, we are applying the Bernoulli's principle to fluid flow. Sorry. Uh, energy conservation principle to fluid flow. Then, what are the implications? This is very interesting. There are nice experiments to demonstrate this. We are going to show something. Okay, so I hope all of you will enjoy this session. So, first, let me uh, do the boring session. Little bit theory we'll discuss. Okay, <laughs> then we'll come back to. Uh, we'll go to an experiment. Then you'll understand the concept in a much better fashion. Okay, so first I will start from the beginning. See, I will I will explain the system. See, whenever we uh, discuss some scientific theory, we have to uh, we have to explain you the physical scenario where uh, we can uh, we can uh, conceptualize or before going to the model, before going to the mathematical model, we have to define and explain the physical scenario. Look here, in this situation, you have yes, a tube. We are we are we are pumping water. Assume that you are pumping water from your sump. Okay, it's a very familiar thing. You all of you know that what is happening while pumping water from your sump. You are putting energy. Okay, you are supplying some energy, you are lifting water from bottom to the top overhead tank, you are filling the tank and you are consuming at your will because the return journey of water will be with the help of gravity. Okay, now if you are taking water from, see this is the base level, we are considering this base as a potential energy zero. All of you know that potential energy, we already uh, finished uh, work energy power by this time, I believe so. So, this is actually the reference line where potential energy is zero. So, this location is at a H, H1 distance. See, this particular location is H1 distance. I mean the center line of the tube. So, again, this is a section of a longer column. So, we are actually considering a pipeline. Assume that there is a pipeline from uh, Iran to India. Assume that. It is not a realist actually. So, we are planning so that we will uh, 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 escape from our energy issues. Okay. So, it is a long pipe. We are taking two sections at two different uh, heights. Okay. So, from the reference level, so, this portion is at H1 level and this is at H2, height in meters, assume that, okay. So, if you are lifting water from this location or any fluid or oil from this location to this location, you have to do some work. You have to do some work against gravity. Basically, you are lifting a piece of mass delta M to this location, sorry, to from this location to this location. So, you have to do certain amount of work, okay. Now, the first thing is, 
just give me a second. Okay, when you are doing that work, see, you know that gravitation work. What is gravitation work? You know that if you are lifting a block, for a simple case, I will tell you, from the ground, if you are lifting a block to a height h, what is the work done? MGH. Basically, work is nothing but you know the definition. Work is equal to F into S or force into displacement, F dot displacement. Technically, F dot is a dot product. You see, F into S into cos theta will be coming into picture. So, if you are lifting a body from ground level to some height H, you know that displacement of the body is in, in this vertical upward direction. The gravity force is acting in the downward direction so that there is 180 degree angle, 180 degree angle between the downward gravitation force and displacement in the upward direction so that the work cos 180, F into S into cos 180. I hope all of you are uh, thorough with this. If anybody have doubt, please uh, post your uh, in the chat, you can ask, we will be replying later. Okay. So, work done will be equal to F into S into or F, F dot S or F S cos theta, we can say F S cos theta, okay, cos 180 is nothing but minus 1, so this value will be nothing but minus of mg, minus of mg will be the work done if you are lifting a body from ground level to, to some height, okay, so here the same thing is applicable, so you are lifting the body from this location, so this location from this location, so if you are taking the quantity, H2 minus H1, this is nothing but delta H, okay. Delta H is nothing but the height difference. So, the work done will be equal to, the work done by the gra gravity will be equal to, so work done by gravity will be equal to minus of the element, the small mass we lifted, delta M into G, M into G. This negative is coming because when you are lifting a fluid from lower level to higher level, you are doing negative work. Work done in this case will be negative. Work done by gravity will be negative. So, that is the work done. See, basically we are pumping with a pump set. We are giving some energy. We are pumping this liquid to that level. So, what exactly is happening here? We are going to discuss. See, first work done is required that we are, the gravity is doing some work or we are doing some work against the gravity and this much will be the work done minus of M into, G, M into, so Mg, GH, sorry, I missed H here, MGH, okay. Mg is force and Mg into H we have to multiply. Sorry for that, okay. Here, Mg is force into H we have to multiply. Sorry, that was a mistake. I missed that. Sorry for that. So, MGH will be the work done against gravity. Now, another important concept you have to discuss. Let me go to next slide. See, here, pressure force is acting. So, this is very important. You have to understand this thoroughly. I think so far you never studied about pressure energy or work done by pressure. You are going to study that in upcoming chapter, thermodynamics. So, with that concept, this will be much clearer for you. Okay. So, try to understand, try to listen and try to understand. This is actually a concept coming in thermodynamics, pressure volume work. So, I will try to explain. So, here we already discussed about the work done by gravity. So, work done by gravity is nothing but minus of delta M into or that delta H is there, delta H into G or MGH basically. This is the work done against gravity. Now, pressure P1 is acting here. And here, this portion, pressure P2 is acting in this direction. That is basically the fluid ahead is applying that much pressure to the, uh, the to, to this side. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, here, you can say that here we are pushing the liquid, the, the, the pressure is applied on this side by the fluid behind that portion. So, pressure is applied and because of that pressure, basically we can find out the force acting on that session because pressure is nothing but force by area. Okay, so force is nothing but pressure into area we can find out. It's very interesting, please listen. So here, certain amount of pressure is acting here. So you can find out the work done. What is work done? Again, force into displacement is work done. So assume you are taking a small portion here. Let that portion is nothing but delta x portion. Okay, so what is that delta x? If you know the area of cross section, let it be area of cross section A1 here. Similar way, area of procession at this, this side is A2, okay. So, you know that the con continuity principle you can apply again here. Whatever volume entering into the system should leave the system. That means A1 into delta X. So, A1 into 
delta x1 in this location we call it delta x1 this is delta x2 this is a2 into delta x2 what is this this one if you are dividing by time if you are dividing by time that is going to give you the volume flow rate the volume flow rate should not change because we already discussed in the continuity principle now we can say that this quantity should be same or we can call this as delta v so that will be same so here i can write down so a1 into delta x1 should be equal to a2 into delta x2 at that location this is delta x1 and delta x2 is the displacement happened to the element of fluid under consideration okay now this is a2 into delta x this should be equal to nothing but you know this quantity is nothing but delta v so now we are going to calculate the work done see let us do that see work done is nothing but again force into displacement what is force force is nothing but pressure into area okay so pressure p1 here acting and here p2 because at different locations different pressure will be there usually you will be experiencing different pressure okay now here you can see that work done will be equal to force into displacement force is nothing but pressure into so that p1 into a into or a1 into displacement is nothing but delta x1 so listen carefully work done by the pressure we are trying to estimate the work done by pressure pressure is nothing but force per unit area applied by the fluid behind that portion so here we can say that work done is equal to by the pressure p1 is equal to p1 into a into delta x is nothing but is equal to a2 into delta x2 that will be equal to delta v simply that will be equal to delta v see this quantity we can p1 into delta v will be equal to work done see delta v is nothing but not velocity is a volume flow volume flow okay or volume not rate actually volume so p into dv whenever you are getting the product of pressure and volume you will understand that when you go th go through the concept of thermodynamics concepts in thermodynamics you will understand in a much better fashion don't worry now much okay so p into delta v is going to give you the work done now here two things are there again once thermodynamic sign convention we are bringing into picture see here we can say we are working on the system here we are system is working by the system here we are getting some work by the system so in that case on the system always we call it positive and work done by the system is negative so here two works are there on the right side you can see that work done by work done by the system here work done on the system work done on the system we have to take it as positive work done by the system you have to take it as negative see i will show you that see here work done sorry work done by pressure 1 we can write down as here you know p1 into delta v and work done by pressure 2 on the other side that we can write down as how much is that that is negative negative of p2 into delta v we can write total work done we can take the summation the total summation will be equal to the summation of these two quantity will be the total work done by the pressure okay the pressure total work done net work done on that entire fluid under consideration we can find out by adding these two elements okay so now this is actually the work done by gravity let us see see work done by gravity we discussed okay work done by gravity is nothing but minus of delta m under consideration into g that is a force into h or delta h okay so delta h is basically nothing but delta h is equal to h2 minus h1 is delta h okay that we already discussed now work done by the work done by the pressure that we can add up both by p1 and p2 okay so this will be equal to work done by the pressure p1 you know that p1 into delta v then plus the quantity is minus minus of p2 into delta v here you can do one thing you can write the entire thing you can write down in negative form that means negative of we can write p1 into delta v plus p2 into delta v we can write down it's actually the derivation we are trying to do the derivation uh, we will quickly finish this part see all of you uh, listen thoroughly so if you have to understand at least once you have to go through this process then only you will understand the entire picture that's why we are going to this derivation part okay so here the total work done by the pressure we discussed now we have to add up these are the two work done see this is a this work is done by the pressure 
in the system and this work is done by the gravity or done against the gravity. So total work done. Now we are moving to the work energy principle. What is work energy principle? The work energy principle says that the total work done, the change in kinetic energy will be equal to work done. So total work done is nothing but the sum of these two quantities. See, this is the work done by gravity, okay? And this is the work done by the pressure. So these two quantities, if you are adding up together, you are going to get the total work done. That is nothing but change in kinetic energy. So let us go back to the system. See, just a second. Here, let us see this screen again, this frame again. Here, certain velocity is there. Here, the fluid is moving with velocity V1. The fluid velocity is changing to V2 here. So there will be definitely, there will be a change in kinetic energy for the mass of, for a fixed amount of mass. For example, kinetic energy, what is the definition? Kinetic energy is nothing but half into mv square. All of you know the definition, m into v square. See, here we are considering a small amount of mass, delta m. So in that case, kinetic energy will be equal to, or we can say simply write delta k, I'm going to write. For instead of ke, I'm writing delta k. This delta k will be equal to half into delta m into v square. Okay. So this is nothing but velocity. So this is actually nothing but, ah, here, and again, see, here, you know, you can write down half, sorry, this is actually v1 square, sorry, or v2 square minus v1 square, we can write. Because we are looking for the change in kinetic energy. Okay. So here, you can see this is v2 square minus v1 square, that will be the change in kinetic energy. So the second location, final minus initial we are taking. So this much will be the kinetic energy change happened in the system. Now we are going back to the work energy principle. See, here we know the work done against gravity and work done by the pressure. See, these two quantities, we are, if you are adding together, you should get the total work done or you should get the total change in kinetic energy. That is called work energy principle. Okay. So in the next slide, we'll be discussing that. Sorry. See, total work done. Kinetic energy change will be equal to half into, sorry, we'll do one thing. Okay. So, here kinetic energy delta K is nothing but, you already know, half into delta mass. Delta means a small change. Okay. Delta into V2 square minus V1 square. Okay. This should be equal to the total work done. Total work done is, what is total work done? Work done by gravity minus of, you know, P1, sorry, second, yeah, here you know, this is minus of P1 into delta V, this quantity we have to, these two things we have to add up, so minus of P1 delta V, here I think, just a second, uh, if you are putting minus here, this should be minus because this is plus. You can see this is plus. Okay. So this should be minus or we have to write this in another form. That is a confusion happened. Minus of P2 delta V minus P1 delta V. You will understand why we are doing this. Okay. So here this is the work done by the pressure. So let us add these two quantities together. So I mean these two quantities. So here... Okay, so here you can see that work done by pressure is equal to minus of, you can say P2 into delta V minus of P1 into delta V. This is work done by the pressure. We are adding this with, so this part I will do one thing. We are adding this with work done by gravity. What is that work done by gravity? That is nothing but minus of, okay, delta M into G into H. H is nothing but delta H here, that is actually H2 minus H1. So if you are adding these two quantities, these two quantities, if you are adding, you should get the delta kinetic energy, that is actually the work energy principle, okay? Now, if you are doing that, you can see that here, delta M into minus delta M into G, you can uh, add these quantities together. Here also, you can see that here you can substitute this value. So I will do that. Then you can see that what, this is actually the final step. We are coming back to the, we are slowly coming to the uh, principle, Bernoulli's principle equation. After that, we'll uh, discuss the uh, interesting part. Okay. This part is little boring. Please bear with us. Okay. Yeah. So here you can see that minus of delta M into G into H, delta H is nothing but H2 minus H1 we can write, okay. That here minus of P2 or we can write minus of P2 into 
delta v minus p1 into delta v should be equal to half into delta m into v2 square minus v1 square okay so from work energy principle we came up to this point now we can do one thing see you can you can you already know mass density what is the definition of density the density is nothing but is equal to delta mass by delta volume do one thing divide everywhere with delta volume what you will get basically if i am dividing this part with delta volume okay here also i am dividing with delta volume okay and here also dividing with delta volume so you know that this quantity become rho okay so this part become look here this part become rho okay density and you know that this will cancel out okay and this part become rho so minus of rho so minus of rho into g into h2 minus h1 here you can see minus of let it be in the bracket now p2 minus p1 should be equal to half into rho into v2 square minus v1 square we are in the last step only one more step is pending we are going to wind up this uh, part okay so now you do one thing rearrange all the p1 in one side and p2 in other side so we can see that all the p1 part you can take to one side and all the p2 part uh, the second the right side part you can bring to one side you can see that see if you are rearranging this you can see a nice equation so p1 plus okay so what uh, what was there see p1 and here rho g h is there rho g h1 and half rho v square is there okay rho into g into h1 plus half into rho into v1 square will be coming on the left hand side and the right hand side will be you can see that p2 plus rho g into h2 plus half into rho into v2 square will be coming here okay so here this is very important actually you can understand this you will you will understand soon what exactly is this we applied we took a uh, mass we took a uh, uh, system of uh, like a water flowing uh, duct we took and we found out two sections and we applied the conservation of or the work energy principle we applied and basically the energy conservation we applied for an element a fluid element okay or a bundle of fluid we applied now we we saw that the pressure this is actually nothing but the pressure at that location and this is actually you know rho g h actually the the gravity part and this is actually nothing but the kinetic energy this quantity is important what is this quantity this is kinetic energy density kinetic energy per unit volume this is actually the pressure energy per unit volume because the work done by the pressure is nothing but p delta v so we are dividing by delta v and we are getting the pressure energy per unit volume so you have to understand in that fashion so pressure energy per unit volume this is the uh, the gravitation energy per unit volume and this is nothing but the kinetic energy per unit volume or basically we call it energy density okay so that in the section 1 so whichever section we consider in the beginning that should be equal to the second you are adding up all the pressure energy per unit volume into gravitation energy into the kinetic energy per unit volume we are getting same quantity these two quantities are equal means the sum of these three heads this three components will be will remain constant okay in any section for an ideal flow if you are considering the flow as ideal flow these three the sum of three quantities three quantities will be constant okay now we can say generally we can write down p plus rho g h okay plus half into rho into v square will be a constant so this principle is called the bernoulli's principle or conservation of energy applied to fluid okay now there are certain implications just one more point i will explain usually we call pressure head gravity head kinetic energy head see head you can get you know that already you know the equation pressure is equal to h rho g so pressure is equal to h rho g equation you already know you studied in fluid statics see this this part if i am dividing by rho g so if i am dividing this part by rho g basically you are getting h or this dimension of this part become meter or length okay you are getting length as dimension so if you are dividing everywhere with rho g you can see that 
this equation will change in a different form. I will show you here, you know, P by rho g, okay, P by rho g plus, just let me write down in the next page. So, P by rho g here, see, you can see that this part become rho g will cancel out, only h will be there. Here, you know, v square by 2g will come. So, here, you know, h will come plus v square by 2g will come this is also going to be a constant. See, in this case, you have to understand one important concept. Here we call it head, okay. This component is called pressure head and this is called gravity head and this is called kinetic energy head. This head means usually in terms of meter. You will understand that in, in practical, there is so, so much practical importance, especially when we discuss about building dams, building hydroelectric projects, this head has some significance. We always express the energy in terms of meter, in meter of meters of water, water column. So, this head, energy heads have significance, okay. I hope all of you understood. It was little boring, I know, because uh, so much math was involved. And anyway, we simply applied uh, kinetic energy, the, the work energy principle we applied to uh, the a fluid element under consideration. And we saw that uh, this part should be the sum of the pressure energy per unit volume plus kinetic energy per unit volume plus gravitational energy per unit volume should be constant. Now, what is the importance of this? So, what, what do you mean by that? What happened? Okay, that is the most important point you have to understand now. So, let us see that. See here, what I am saying is the pressure plus h rho g, sorry, the, the pressure, this part, I will go, I will explain the last slide itself, now I need to write again. See, just let us see. See this part. See here we are saying the pressure energy and this is actually because of the difference in difference in height. If you are choosing different locations, then only this picture, this element come into picture, this component will come into picture. Otherwise, you know, pressure at a location and then if a body is moving, if, a, if a in a tube, if the fluid is moving, you can see that pressure and the sum of these two quantities, this is the first quantity, this is the second quantity, the sum of these quantities will be same. Because at same horizontal level, if you are considering a straight pipe like this, you can see that all are at same height and this H1 and H2 will be same and these two quantities will be cancelling out. Okay, now we can see that P and half rho V square is there. See, this quantity will be constant. Then you will understand what exactly you mean by that. So, P plus half into rho into V square will be constant. See, at least you have to keep in mind this is the final form of Bernoulli's theorem applied to a horizontal tube or horizontal flow of fluid. Okay, now what do you mean by this? It's actually entire thing is lying in the entire concept is in this section. So, we can see that the pressure, the sum of the pressure and velocity, the kinetic energy heard, the kin how, kinetic energy per unit volume is going to be a constant. That means, what do you mean by that? In such, a, such an equation, it's an equation where this says that if, if this quantity is increasing, if velocity is increasing, this is a single most point, more point you have to remember in this chapter, in this Bernoulli's theorem section, okay. Please give enough importance for this. If you understand this, if you understand the practical implications of this, then you are done, okay. No need to worry any, anything about these kind of, these, the questions coming from this section. So, here if velocity is increasing, pressure should go down. Then only the right hand side will be constant. That is the most important thing you have to understand here. I hope all of you understood this concept. Now we will do one thing. Now we can demonstrate, we will show you a small experiment so that you will understand that what you mean by this, okay. So I will uh, show you, you see all of you, all of you know about this uh, hair dryer. I have a hair dryer and I have a ping pong ball. Let me take that setup, okay. See all of you know a ping pong ball. This is actually a ping pong ball, okay. So I have a small device here, you know this is basically a uh, jet so we can we can generate a jet here okay so if i'm if i'm putting this ping pong ball in this location you know that see naturally you will expect this will fly off okay but that will not happen that is very interesting here see this is actually application of bernoulli's theorem we have seen right now we have seen that if velocity is increasing pressure should go down that means right now at this spot you know, there is no velocity, almost the air is, the ambient air is almost stagnant. Stagnant means it's not moving. So here ambient air is stagnant and there is no velocity or we can say that velocity is zero. Now, when I switch on this, some noise will come, please bear with that, okay. So when I'm going to switch on this hair dryer and you are going to hear some sound. So some jet of air will be coming out of this. I'm, I'm going to place this ping pong ball or basically this is a tennis ball, I'm going to place at this location. 
So let us see what is going to happen here. All of you, be careful. Put your complete attention here. This is really an interesting experiment. Okay, I'm going to switch on this. Uh, I'm going to switch on this uh, uh, air pump. Some noise will come definitely. Please adjust. Okay. See. Okay, what exactly is happening here? It's very interesting. See, I told you, see in, the, in this next slide I will explain you. So you have seen that a jet of, see this is our uh, hair dryer. Okay, from here a jet of air is coming out like this. Okay, now you know that previously the velocity was, what was the velocity? Was zero, the air was stagnant, the ambient air was stagnant and the velocity was zero initially or we can say initial, sorry, V initial was zero, we can say that v initial was 0 and v final there was a finite value for v final because you know we were pumping air we were pumping air with the help of a fan and you know we were getting a finite value so some v naught v0 or something was there now what is happening the bernoulli theorem is appli applicable here you know that previous slide we have seen that the velocity increased the pressure should go down the pressure should go down with respect to ambient condition ambient condition means atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure you know that end air because of the end air atmosphere there is certain amount of pressure is experienced on the surface of earth and how much is that it's one point i hope all of you know that 1.0 1, 1 3 to 5 into 10 to the power 5 pascal this much pressure is experienced it's a heavy pressure this much pressure is experienced on the atmosphere now in this case you can see that here this region the pressure will go down the pressure will go down compared to the ambient see ambient means i am i am talking about this region see outside this region pa will be experienced is nothing but atmospheric pressure all of you know that so every other location except inside the jet there will be ambient pressure and see ambient pressure means atmospheric pressure okay so when the jet is forming this region pressure will go down the pressure will go down and the ball will retain that position ball will stay there okay this ping pong ball will stay there because the fluid is flowing like this and as a result there is a low pressure region is created and if the ping pong ball is trying to go out of this what happened the atmospheric pressure is going to apply some force and it will it will push back to that stream of jet and it will stay there okay it seems very easy it looks very easy but you have to understand the concept behind the underlying concept behind this experiment you have to understand thoroughly i hope all of you understood this the principle you can read about this you can uh, you can uh, browse yourself in the internet you can find out or you can read more about this experiment so basically this ball is stationary here it was floating because of this See, here don't think that this is floating because of this balance. The weight is balanced by, see we can say weight is there, then there will be a jet force will be there. Here these, this balance is not working here. We can balance, in fact we can balance this, but here even if you are tilting this, even if you are tilting this ball, you know, you can still, you can show that this is balancing. You can explore that, I am not going to much details, you can explore that. That says that, you know, this this ball is balanced there because of the low pressure created in that jet stream so that the atmosphere pressure is not allowing this jet to go outside okay fine i hope all of you understood this this was a wonderful experiment which demonstrate the principle of bernoulli bernoulli's principle and one more thing i forgot to tell you see bernoulli is not a yeah yeah see i will do one thing see for uh, those who miss this experiment i will do one thing i will show once again this experiment okay let us see See, here I have uh, this jet, this is actually a hair dryer, okay. Now, I am going to switch on this, I have a ping pong ball here, see here, I am placing it here, I am going to switch on this. See. Okay, I hope all of you enjoyed this uh, demonstration. 
So one more thing, so some, the ball is rotating, you can, I am exploring, uh, I am giving, uh, leaving that to you, you can explore why this is rotating, you uh, read little bit, do some research work on this, okay. So why this is rotating while we are doing this experiment, okay, fine. So uh, we will do one thing, we will go to next slide. Fine. See, this actually one more um, will introduce a little bit about our methods. You know, we are actually, I, we in, in the beginning I told you we are using active learning methodologies. Active learning method means we are using a lot of activities like this so that student will uh, generate interest in understanding or will generate some passion in the student to uh, explore more. Because, you know, whenever we, we connect with real life, you know, you will naturally study things in much easier way or with much passion you will be exploring things. So that part is missing in our system traditionally for decades, you know, that is missing from our education system. So we are trying to, our, our group, our R&D team is trying to make some change, a small change to that uh, system so that our students, we can generate some genius from our uh, students or uh, we can at least generate some independent thinking or original thinkers from our uh, society okay that is our idea so we are following this active learning methods so that active learning methods you can read about that what exactly mean that we are doing research in that and we are do, uh, trying to develop a pedagogy based on this so that we can blend at the same time we are not losing the uh, the spirit of competitive exam will be going back to problems will be showing a lot of experiments so that you will get the concept in a very good way and we'll go back to problems and you will experience the difference seriously it's going to change your life you will experience a, a, a sharp understanding of concepts uh, once you understand the concept in the practical perspective okay fine so do one thing I'll give you one more uh, example okay so the practical application of this Bernoulli's principle I will uh, discuss see you may know about this uh, you know especially when recently you know Chennai was affected by the uh, uh, that uh, hurricane not hurricane actually that the uh, exact name I forgot I was not getting so uh, that during that heavy wind you know what happened most of the roof will get thrown away what is happening this also there is something to do with Bernoulli's equation so here I will show you a small schematic is that this is a house you know assume that there is no wind in such a situation you know pressure will be atmosphere pressure everywhere atmosphere pressure will be there but the moment wind flows you know that wind is flowing like this the velocity is going to increase okay as a result what happened the pressure should go down pressure should go down outside the building outside the building means the roof this part the pressure will be less compared to inside what happened naturally this will explode or this will expand and this will fly away so that is what happening in this case that is the reason why roof are overthrown during a heavy wind okay so you have to understand that there is something to do with the Bernoulli's principle in this case now there is one more example see you may be knowing uh, you may be knowing this chimney chimney is night you know if you have a house like this okay especially in foreign countries is very common there will be a fireplace okay wherever the temperature goes below zero there will be a fireplace so assume that your fireplace is here and uh, you have a long chimney on the top of building like this see there are different methods there will be a draft in this draft means there will be upward flow there will be the fluid in this column have a tendency to go up the reason is nothing but see if air flow is happening on the top of this chimney what happened the velocity at that location increases as a result what happened the pressure in the region go down as a result the fluid have a tendency to go up in the chimney so this is one of the nice example if you go to some industrial area you can see that lot of heavy chimneys are there if you go to Ennur you can see that in the uh, I mean North Chennai if you're going you can see uh, thermal power plants uh, the towers are there you know uh, the smoke the we are burning uh, call to generate energy so that smoke towers are, are put in a very high uh, height and you know flow will naturally happen where nobody is pumping from bottom because no need to pump that because you know because of this draft heavy wind will be there if you go to at upper atmosphere there will be wind velocity will be going up you know that that is the reason why we are putting wind turbines at very high uh, height okay so velocity will be more pressure will be less that is why naturally flow will happen so whatever smoke generated here will be naturally thrown away or even natural ventilation will happen to the room so that fresh air will enter into the room this is also working based on the principle of Bernoulli okay I hope all of you understood this concept thoroughly so let us go to next slide 
see this is another application this is something like venturi meter i am not going to the uh, details this is actually a flow measurement device you know that here the continuity principle is applied you know that here if a velocity is v1 here at a constriction this is actually called vena contracta vena contracta is nothing but a converging diverging nozzle so this section is called vena contracta and this can be used in long oil pipes or water pipes so that without knowing any information without knowing the flow velocity you will be able to do the measurement see this detailed calculation i am not going but basically you know when the velocity increases here pressure goes down so if you are connecting a manometer manometer is a device which used to measure pressure okay manometer so if you are connecting a manometer here pressure will be going down because of the suction or more velocity less pressure so here the pressure will be more because of slow velocity less velocity more pressure so here you know in a large pipe in a large flow if you are putting a small constriction like this or vena contractor if you are inserting you know what happen you will get a low pressure region you can get this pressure difference so this pressure difference we can use to find out if you know this area ratio if you know a1 and a2 and this pressure difference you can find out the volume flow rate or q is nothing but av you can find out there is a complete derivation for that i am not going to that details because it will take long time to derive is uh, not possible now so this is an example application is a measurement device works based on the concept of bernoulli's principle okay now <laughs> we will uh, we'll go to a problem after this and before that see all of our uh, faculties uh, many of you may be knowing all of our faculty are from either from iit madras or from uh, or from iac bangalore you know indian institute of science bangalore and most of our colleagues are doing uh, either phd or doing a full time uh, research with us research in the sense and we are developing lot of methods we are lot developing lot of experimental activities with us and uh, we are happy to say that is one of the uh, first uh, attempt in india to teach uh, school students using these kind of methods okay so here uh, we'll do one more problem okay see here is another application of again we'll be giving one uh, two minute for you we'll be winding up quickly so listen one more experiment we have to show so then uh, we, because we started a little late right we may take little more time so please be patient i hope you are enjoying uh, and uh, you uh, please bear with us for some more time okay so here i will explain the question then uh, we'll give you two minutes and try to in the same way you try to answer and drop your comments okay so here water in a streamline water in streamline flows along a horizontal pipe with non uniform cross section that means area is changing in between okay at a point in the pipe where area of cross section is 10 okay is given 10 cm square remember 10 cm square is area of cross section okay then actually this is 10 cm square okay it should be plus so the velocity of the water is 1 meter per second and the pressure is 200 pascal at that location the question is the pressure at another point where the cross sectional area is 5 cm square see basically you have to apply by uh, bernoulli's principle so you are, you can find out the answer which one is the right answer you have to try that we'll give you 2 minutes time attempt and in the same way drop your comments who are putting your first response in the uh, comment section will be sending some surprise okay fine please do that i will give you 2 minutes time
All right. Okay. So here the first person responded was Supraja, then Minakshi, then Subbaya, then Tarun. Okay. So congrats for the one response. So we'll be explaining this question. So here, what is given? Two sections are there. So first section is here. And another section we can say here. So, you know, both areas are given. So, A1. So, anyway, we uh, we are not going to that details. We can directly go to the, write down the, uh, the Bernoulli's equation. You know that Bernoulli's equation we can write down like P1 by rho plus V1 square by 2. That is actually what I am doing is, see, this division we are dividing by rho g and then we are taking. So, that should be equal to P2 by rho plus v2 square by 2. So, because we, we have the velocities at two different sessions because we are not going to use that area directly. So, we can directly write down this. Ah, we can use actually velocity we can find out. Sorry. See, this area of cross section is given. A2 is given. A1 is given. So, we can write down A1 v1 is equal to A2 v2. So, A1 v1 is equal to A2 v2. We can use the continuity principle. Then from that you can find out, see, the velocity, this velocity is 1 at this location and we can find out a1, v1 is equal to a2, v2, we can apply and we can find out the velocity at the second section. So here, you know, 10 into 1 should be equal to 5 into 10 into, sorry, we can uh, write down just a second, 10 into 1 is equal to 5 into v2, okay. So 10 into 1 will be equal to 5 into v2, we can say v2 is going to be 2 uh, units is 2. Uh, meter per second because this is 1 meter per second. Okay, so 2 meter per second will be the velocity. So we found out that then Bernoulli's principle because it's the ho same horizontal level, the height is not changing. So we can apply this values here. You can substitute the values and you can find out. See, P1, what is the value of P1? 200, 2000 Pascal is given. So 200, sorry, 2000 Pascal divided by density. The water is flowing, density is nothing but 1000 kilogram per meter cube. So 1000 you can put here, 1000 that plus v1 square that is nothing but 1 square divided by 2 and that should be equal to how much is p2 p2 is actually what we are trying to find out p2 divided by again rho 1000 okay then you can say that v2 v2 square is nothing but 4 square so 2 square that is going to be 4 so 2 square divided by 2 so if you are solving this you can find out that this is only unknown so here you know 2 will be coming this is 1 by 2 2 plus 1 by 2 then 4 by 2 will be coming here so if you are substituting here you can find out the p2 directly you can do the math and p2 will equal to 500 pascal okay so I hope all of you understood the problem it's a very simple problem you're simply applying if you know the concept of Bernoulli you can solve these kind of simple problems okay now we'll do one thing one more small demonstration we'll do and uh, which will show you is in a, the same thing the pressure variation uh, when you are increasing velocity the same thing we are explaining in a in a different uh, experiment setup okay let us see that here we can see we have a Yeah. So here you can see that we have a small funnel. Okay, small funnel is connected to a tube and air is coming from here. So in this case, if I'm putting if I'm putting some uh, puffed rice, you know, this is like a thermocol, a small uh, piece of uh, light material if you're putting. If you're putting into this, you can see that this will be flying away. See? See, you can see that it's flying away. When you are opening the air, when you are operating the air, it's flying away. But the moment you put some ball, some ping pong ball I am putting into this. See, what happened? What do you expect normally? You may expect this also will come out of this, but that is not going to happen. That is the interesting part here. See, I am going to switch on. See, you can see that. See, yeah. See what is happening here. See when you are putting a ping pong ball here, actually, you know, this is actually not not suck. It actually getting the ball is getting sucked inside. But you know, uh, here again, as our expectation. See here, what we are expecting is, you can see in our case, this is actually the funnel, and there is a ball here. See, when you are doing like this, what happens is here air jet is coming and you know 
at this constriction the velocity of the air will go up and as a result you know what happen again when pressure goes up sorry when velocity goes up what happen the pressure should go down that is what happened here so as a result what happen this ball instead of going away if you are putting some puffed rise what is happening is actually flying away you have seen that it is flying away but when you are putting a ball like this and when you are pumping air remember we are pumping air into system not sucking air from here so but you know actually what happen is the a the ball is going to stay there and ball is getting sucked into the system into this funnel because you know there is a low pressure created in this region and that low pressure will be sucking in okay now we'll do one thing we can show you uh, one more uh, interesting experiment okay then uh, you will realize see we can actually float i have a ball here see i have a ball here I actually i can float this float this using a jet of air so that is really interesting that is again another application of bernoulli okay let us try to do that we'll be showing somewhere yeah see here see i will show you let me take a nozzle we have a gun of air see here we have a gun of air and we are trying to run this yeah so we are going to uh, run this just let me let me do this see here if i am putting this air if if i am starting this jet you can see that this will rotate okay look here i hope all of you seen what exactly happened so when you are taking a ball and if you are hitting a jet stream here you know that downward gravity mg is acting okay you may think that there is some momentum exchange happening here because you know that mass there is a change in velocity uh, air hitting here coming back you may think that that balance that momentum that that force because of uh, uh, dp by you know that the force is equal to dp by dt you know that delta change in change in momentum dp by dt is equal to force you may think that that is happening because of the change in mass the, the mass flow so that is not the reason actually you know is this is balanced because of this low pressure region whenever you are putting because you know if that is a case if you are putting listen very carefully if you are putting a jet in angle in a little inclined what happen this force should have two components one will be in a horizontal direction one will be in a vertical direction so if that is the case this force this horizontal component should try to take the ball out from this liquid this location but that is not happening even if you are inclining that is not happening because you know the low pressure region around this you can you can see that there will be a low pressure region creating around this like this and because this part is p atmosphere and this part is some pressure that pressure is less than p atmosphere and because of that reason the ball will remain in that location okay that is the idea again we are proving the bernoulli equation i hope all of you enjoyed that experiment you can try if you are getting a stream of air or you can take a small straw and the ping pong ball you can do this experiment you try at home okay so ball will stay there because of this issue because issue in the sense the bernoulli principle okay now we'll try to wind up soon so let us see here one more thing we are we have a platform called exam grid this platform is dedicated for neat and j aspirants so we have a facility to take give exams and uh, here through this platform we'll be taking exams like uh, you can take up exams and you will get automatic uh, results and this will help you a lot to uh, do regular practice and you will be documented your progress can be tracked okay fine this problem we are actually is uh, out of uh, time actually we are skipping but i will i will tell you one small thing you can try this problem see this is again application of continuity see you might have seen that whenever uh, a tap is uh, water is running from tap you can see that in the beginning there will be a thicker portion and in the towards the lower portion there will be thin portion because you know that area because of the gravity velocity will be increasing and you know as a result area will be reducing because mass flow rate should be same or the volume flow rate should be same see you can try this problem at home we'll be sending this through your registered email id maybe if you are interested we can send you the ppts so that you can try this so anyway this is again another application of um, uh, the continuity you can try this problem at home okay
Yeah, apart from this, this is another important program we are offering. Apart from uh, our academic thing, we have a dedicated team for giving proper uh, training for students. You know, if anybody is suffering from any stress issues or uh, if you are finding difficulty in uh, doing the studies, if any problem is there, we have a team of trained psychologists and uh, we have people trained people for uh, giving counseling. So you can attempt, you can, you can approach us in case of such issues or uh, even if you don't have any problems, we'll be discussing how to manage stress, how to uh, do proper studies like the programs like optimum performance and you will be getting more information about your future uh, studies. These kind of facilities are there and uh, you can contact our uh, people counselors for such help. Okay, so we just introduce our programs because you say, uh, live session in the demo session. Fine, so here you can connect. If anybody have any inquiries, if anybody wish to visit our center, we have two centers as of now, one in Velachiri and uh, one in uh, Nanganalur. You can go to our, that center, you can meet, you can meet our counselors or uh, you can call us or you can drop an email to our uh, system so that we'll be able to respond. Yeah, and you can uh, contact to th to this given address uh, for uh, visiting or through phone. We'll be getting more information about our programs. Okay, and uh, one more thing, there is a Google form sent in the chat box. You can, all of you interested, you can drop your uh, response in that so that we'll be uh, calling you, uh, calling you or contacting you back in the next uh, session. Okay, so uh, please uh, don't forget to do that. Please do that. Enter the details in the Google form. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, okay, and uh, I'm very happy to share you with this kind of experiments uh, and this kind of sessions. I hope all of you enjoyed, and thank you for your time. Bye. See you next time. Bye.